So how's a ghost from the 90s shaping the Navy's newest fighter jet? You've got to see this. In the super secret world of military aviation, where new designs are kept under wraps for decades, you almost never get a peek behind the curtain. Are you ready? So when Northrop Grumman just dropped some conceptual artwork for their FAXX proposal, the entire defense community went into overdrive. Why? Because it looks a whole lot like their legendary YF-23 prototype from back in the day, a plane that many aviation buffs believe was robbed of its destiny. It seems like the YF-23's revolutionary design, which was controversially passed over, is making a comeback. And it's not for nostalgia, it's because the world has gotten a lot more complicated and we desperately need what that visionary aircraft was designed to do. Why the Navy needs a new jet like yesterday. The Navy's FAXX program is a huge deal, arguably one of the most important in a generation. They're looking for a sixth generation carrier-based fighter to take over for the trusty but aging FA-18EF Super Hornets. The main reason for the rush is that potential adversaries, especially China, have developed some seriously nasty long-range missiles. We're not talking about small threats, we're talking about weapons like the DF-21D and DF-26, which are often called carrier killers. These are no joke, they're ballistic missiles that arc into space and then come screaming back down at hypersonic speeds, making them incredibly difficult to track and intercept. This creates a massive keep-out zone, a defensive bubble that can stretch for over a thousand miles. It forces our carriers, the cornerstone of American power projection, to stay way farther from the action just to stay safe. The jets we have now, even the F-35C, just don't have the legs to fly in from that far out, execute a mission deep in enemy territory, and get back safely without a ton of help from vulnerable tanker planes. Imagine a single fighter needing multiple refuelings to reach its target. Each of those tankers is a big, slow, non-stealthy target, a juicy prize for an enemy. Relying on them is a logistical nightmare and a massive operational risk. So the new FAXX has to have way more range and be able to stay in the air longer, all on its own. Of course, it hasn't been smooth sailing. There's been a lot of drama over the budget. The Pentagon was worried about trying to build two super-advanced jets at the same time, the Navy's FAXX and the Air Force's FA-47. The concern was that the highly specialized engineers, scientists, and manufacturing facilities needed for these complex projects are a finite resource. Trying to run both programs at full speed could stretch the industrial base too thin, leading to delays and cost overruns for everyone. They wanted to slow roll the Navy's version. But Congress stepped in and pushed to get the FAXX its funding, so now it's at the center of a big debate about what our priorities should be for the future of air power. What Northrop Grumman is bringing to the table. It looks like it's down to Northrop Grumman and Boeing for the big contract. A lot of people think Northrop Grumman has the edge, especially since they strategically bowed out of the Air Force's competition to pour all their resources into this one. And the new concept art? It's basically the YF-23's ghost, but packed with all the incredible tech we've developed over the last few decades. We're talking about a plane that's going to completely change the game in terms of stealth, range, and how the pilot flies it. Next level stealth. First off, this thing is designed to be ridiculously hard to see on radar. It's all smooth, curving lines and blended wings, nothing like the sharp angles on older jets. Think of it like this. Sharp angles on a plane bounce radar signals right back to the enemy's receiver, like a mirror. These continuously curving surfaces scatter the signals in all directions, making the jet practically invisible. They're aiming for broadband, or all-aspect stealth, which is a huge leap forward. This means the jet is sneaky across all kinds of radar frequencies, from the big long-range search radars that operate on low frequencies to the high-frequency ones used to guide missiles. It's a holistic approach to stealth that Northrop Grumman pioneered with the B-2 and is perfecting with the new B-21 Raider Bomber. Good luck finding this thing! Room for fuel and firepower. 
Another thing you notice right away is how big and deep the body of the jet is. That's on purpose. It means there's a ton of space inside for two critical things, fuel and weapons. By carrying a massive fuel load internally, the jet can achieve the incredible range the Navy needs. And by keeping all its weapons inside, it stays super stealthy. Hanging bombs and missiles off the wings is a big no-no for stealth, as it lights up on radar like a Christmas tree. This voluminous internal bay also means it can carry the next generation of weapons, bigger, longer-range missiles, and potentially even hypersonic weapons, allowing it to strike heavily defended targets from a safe distance. AI in the cockpit. It looks like this will be a single-seater, which is pretty wild considering how complex these missions are. That tells us there's going to be a seriously powerful AI acting not just as a virtual co-pilot, but as a true cognitive partner. The AI would handle all the tough stuff that would normally overwhelm a single person fusing data from the jet's own sensors with information from drones, satellites, and other assets into one simple, intuitive picture of the battle space. It would manage the jet's electronic warfare suite, automatically detecting and jamming enemy threats. It could even anticipate enemy actions and suggest tactical options to the pilot. This frees up the human pilot to be the quarterback of the mission, focusing on the big picture and making the critical strategic calls instead of getting lost in the weeds of information overload. Built for the high seas. You can't just fly any jet off a carrier. The concept art shows off some seriously beefy landing gear, and that's key. Carrier plans are subjected to what's kindly called a controlled crash on every landing, slamming onto the deck and getting violently jerked to a stop by an arresting wire. The catapult launch is just as brutal. The whole airframe has to be built like a tank to handle that abuse day in and day out, not to mention being resistant to the corrosive saltwater environment. There's a little debate about the engine intake being on top of the jet. It's great for stealth, but could be tricky for landings when the jet's nose is high in the air potentially blocking airflow to the engines. But hey, the art might just be hiding the real classified design. So what was the deal with the original YF-23? Back in the 90s, it went up against the YF-22, which became the F-22 Raptor. On paper, the YF-23 was a monster. It was faster, flew higher, and was significantly stealthier. But the Air Force at the time was still dominated by a dogfighting culture, a holdover from the lessons of Vietnam. The YF-22, with its crazy agility and thrust vectoring engines, put on a flashier, more aggressive flight demonstration that wowed the pilots and generals. In contrast, Northrop's demonstration was more conservative and data-focused. So, the YF-22 won. It was a choice that perfected the art of the close-in fight right as the nature of air combat was shifting to battles fought from hundreds of miles away. Now, with that shift complete, the YF-23's strengths, speed, range, and stealth are exactly what's needed for survival. Bringing back the YF-23's design philosophy just makes sense today. Sixth-gen fighters aren't just planes, they're the nerve center of a whole network of systems, the pilot acts as the quarterback, directing a team of uncrewed drone wingmen called Collaborative Combat Aircraft that can fly ahead to scout, jam enemy radar, act as decoys, or even fire weapons, all while the manned jet stays safer. And with countries like China and the European nations racing to build their own next-gen jets like the J-36, Tempest, and FCAS, all based on this same networked concept, Fielding a plane with the YF-23's DNA isn't just a good idea, it's a strategic move that proves a design that was way ahead of its time is now right on time for the future.